That has been the play that's been working for Jimmy, though. Coming on the aggressive cross-court forehand and closing on the net. Game point. It may be difficult for Machir, on the other hand, he can tell that Connors at this point is all at sea, that his mind is not in this thing, and may be difficult to play this kind of match, but there's also that little thought in his mind which says, I may be given this match for free. Great lob from Machia. Two of them, in fact. The first one, Connors got to with a sky hook. The second one was perfectly played. And as you watch this one, this one comes down and just clips the top of the net. So an absolutely unbelievable <laughs> get of Machia to get there and hit such a good lob. the most aggressive backhands that made Cheers hit the entire match. Connors is taking his time, not, I believe, because of anything that has happened between he and Rich Kaufman in the chair, but because he is tired and is conserving his energy. He's been doing that now for a couple of sets. First serve. have the feeling cliff that when jimmy's heartbeat goes racing up into i don't know what numbers that made cheers then hit his heart and he reached 70. he he just well, while jimmy towels off he just wanders around gently waiting patiently for him to come back and serve game point
this. It's like having to start the match all over again after an interruption like that. And the crowd fully apparently behind Con was still. I'll never forget two years ago when he walked off the court, the crowd were cheering him and they wanted nothing more than for him to continue to play. They blamed everybody but Con us for it. Such a good shot from Mitch here. Well, they started off supporting Jimmy in, in the side burst, but I think that they actually, there are quite a few people out there who have actually gone the other way. This is another break point for Machir. He has a break already. This would give him three games to love in the third. So Connors is down now. Two serve breaks in the third set in what might better be described a brawl between Connors and Rich Kaufman. We'll be back. National Players Championships. You're looking on live from Key Biscayne. Time. And fireworks have been lit here by Jimmy Connors and his... Complaints. Kiss my ass, kiss my ass. Not anything. out to get you, you know. Anything's just fine. Just, 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 just. Trying to do the best I can. Yeah, but unfortunately it sucks. Well, you have a right to that opinion, and that's okay. You know? yeah, I don't mind that. You get fucked every time, it's just not anybody's opinion. It's just a fact it's of life. It doesn't matter that. You know, it's just a fact of life. Shut up. Well, you, you can hear. All the chickens for if you can do that correctly. He sure makes himself into a martyr, doesn't he? 15 seconds. Oh, yeah. You clearly hear the obscenities now from Connors. There's no doubt about what he's saying. What I find appalling, apart from the fact that he's using language Seats, like that, and that he's going over our airwaves, and for that, again, we apologize. This is a live telecast. There's not much we can do about it. What I do find is appalling that there is no additional action taken by Rich Kaufman against Connors because of the language. That is inexcusable to me. You know, Jeremy Shells, who was the umpire in that match, isn't still a professional umpire, and you always wonder whether they think their job's on the line. I think that's 30. very correct. I think that is an, an excellent point, and I think a lot of people felt that when he was fired, basically from his job, although that's not how they described it, when he left, I think that's what happened to Jeremy Shales, and it probably was as a result of these kinds of things. If so, it was a terrible message to send to officials. It sure was. I mean, he still is an umpire. He still is an umpire here. He's at Wimbledon, wherever, a very well-respected umpire. But it did seem that that decision to fire him from this particular job was contingent on that match. Oh! Close. Connors has got two breaks to serve against him in the set. He has a chance to break back here. That was a most surprising shot from Machir. He had it with an easy overhead and didn't even come close. Almost missed it completely. Yeah, 
Well, having seen what you've seen and heard what you've heard this afternoon, and I suppose you react to it in different ways, I will say this before you get up and say, well, there are those irresponsible, overpaid millionaire tennis players acting up again that I have not seen anything of this nature now in really a year and a half or a couple of years. It is not uh, representative of what happens on the professional tennis tour in general. It really isn't. I think that's absolutely true, Cliff. I think that the general standard of behavior has improved. There are a few players who get fined here and there, and obviously there are quite a lot of misdemeanors, but I think that the thing that upsets people is when they abuse linesmen or umpires. If they get angry with themselves and curse themselves or get a little mad, that's one thing. And my feeling is that the umpires should possibly be a little more lenient if the frustration is fairly legitimate and directed at themselves. But what they shouldn't tolerate at all is when the verbal abuse goes back to the linesman or the umpire. Very often you'll get a, an umpire giving a warning to somebody who has got angry with himself and that just makes them mad. <laughs> is the number two seated player here. He may be the most recognizable face in all of tennis. He's certainly in the top three or four in that department internationally. He's a major worldwide celebrity. And the question may be, would any other player get away with what he gets away with on the court? Oh, I think that's a very valid question. I don't think so. I happen to agree with you. I don't think that if anybody else pulled that, that they would still be on the court playing a match. I agree. I think the match would have been called, or at least a game penalty would have been levied. He knows that he has control over them. Out. We'll start. Okay. Okay. Looks to me as if Jimmy thought that ball was good and Thought, let's see whether he says anything. <laughs> but he's about to Three pick. Of that ball's about this far in. Yeah. That far in, did he say? Uh, he did say in, apparently. <laughs> he was down in one point in this set three games to love with two serve breaks he's still behind a break but only one it's three two for Machia. eight percent in the first set but still considerably higher than Machia. Machia has got more winners and more losers and that probably makes sense you know that Connors is the most consistent player out there Machia always takes his opportunities and doesn't make some of them well we're having fun now Kick butt, Kick butt. come on Jimmy we got him now man this becomes a very important game here because that little lapse from Jimmy is over. His concentration is back, but he's still one break behind. I think you're right. I think he's decided now to play. He's out here. Why not go for it and do his best? He's got that one break back.
And an interesting comparison for the sets. The first serve percentage, Connors has dropped off radically. Mathieu has been pretty much the same all the way through. Connors has a chance. It's love 30. Anytime the ball gets close now, the crowd are trying to inject themselves into this thing, and that, of course, is very often what happens when Jimmy gets involved in these situations. It's upsetting, I'm sure, though, because, well, they feel like they know the calls better than the lines people. It's a natural happening, and you know, it's just going to probably be there for the rest of the match. It's electric out there. For the first time, it looks as if Jimmy was a little winded by all that running. point two break points for Connors what an incredible point but now he's hitting so hard I'm feeling a little bit more relaxed. I'm not quite as mad as I was, <laughs> but I'm coming back and I'm trying real hard now, so, I mean, not that I wasn't trying hard before. Playing like in the first set, Jimmy. Well, <laughs> you hear it from Connors himself. Pretty accurate assessment of what's going on. Right. 150 points have been played, and you may be interested to know that each player has won 75 exactly oh. right. Seventy-five points apiece make that seventy-five to seventy-six for Machia. Now you may be interested that we counted the penalty point against Connors, which gave Machia the second set. solid tennis and have a good time out here be trying not to let a a, uh, a force that shouldn't bother me you know if I can do that I'll be pretty good 
Connors is trying to and may succeed in taking the place of Fred Stolley at courtside as an announcer. <laughs> I know he was pretty angry with the other microphone, but he seems to be wishing he was wearing one himself. You're wondering where Fred is, by the way. He's next door talking to the folks back home in Australia for it's channel nine. <laughs> this is a big point when all is said and done. 15.30, the cheer with a chance. He wins this point to have a couple of break points on Connors in the third. Oh! Lots of breaks of serve. Each set has had a score of three all. Four breaks on six games in the set. And she has started out leading three games to love with two breaks. Connors has broken him twice since then. It's three games all. Just short of two hours. See the time just closing in on 3.15 in the afternoon. We're live, of course, from Key Biscayne. Moments away from Miami on the East Coast, naturally. This is Breakpoint. Oh. And break he does. Miloslav Machia now four games to three with the break. But he's had two breaks before in the set. And Connors has come back. And we'll be back. long Lipton have made their commitment to this tournament so well, there's been some talk about whether the two-week event was an appropriate thing to do at this time of the year because there are four other two-week tournaments played during the year the French of course Wimbledon the US Open and the great tournament now played in the new arena in Australia they're all Grand Slam tournaments this is not a Grand Slam tournament but it is a Grand Slam format tournament 128 players in both the men's and women's field and it lasts, as we mentioned, for two weeks. Closing in on the end. This is men's semi-finals day. Best of five. It's Machir and Jimmy Connors. One set all. Machir serving 4-3. Third set. 15 minutes. Machir won titles on all four surfaces last year. He won here, of course, Key Biscay. That's on hard courts. There's the net play, 32 approaches, 56%. Machir, 60%. He's come in far fewer times, as you can tell. Then Machir won Sydney, New South Wales. That was on grass. He won indoors, the WCT in Dallas, Stuttgart, and, and in Stuttgart. Yeah. Oh. 
Oh. But she gives it back. Two break points now for Connors. I cannot believe that he didn't let that ball bounce and smash it off the ground because he missed that similar smash before. He, ca he came in in an absolutely, almost an immaculate approach shot here. Now, he, it, this would have been a sit if he'd let it bounce. But I imagine, you know, he's only had to hit two smashes in the entire match. First one he goofed up, so he got a little shaky on that one. And once the ball gets up high, there's a bit of win. Yes. Oh! Game on. Connors. Connors breaks. Boy, we played, let's see, eight games in this third set. And six of them have represented breaks of serve. And a bunch of loose points from Mechia. When he got that let cord, it made his shot easier and he over hit a backhand. And then he made a forehand error in that easy smash. So really a bad game for Mechia right there. Just as it looked as if he was getting back in control of the set. Very nervous. <laughs> Fifteen love. Took a poll of the players, asked them if they had a composite player. Who would they choose in various aspects? They said Connors's eyesight and Machia's footwork, interestingly. First serve. Becker's strength, Lindell's mind, Cash's legs, McEnroe's hands, Martina's arms, and the nerves of Steffi Graf. Both of them represented for him. Great play from Made Sure. I would have said the mind of Chris Everett rather than Lendl. I think she's I think he still gets edgy on big occasions. He's got his friend. Ilya Nastasi up there. You hear folks from the crowd telling Jimmy you can do it. They will pull for him no matter what. He knows it. And it helps. It definitely gives you adrenaline. And it's always better playing in front of a home crowd. And almost every crowd in the world is a home crowd for Connors now. Connors beat Borg in 1978 in the Masters in New York, and a lot of people felt that might have been the best match ever played. There'd be a lot of argument with that, of course, but it's certainly up there. Connors has won the US Open five times on three different surfaces. That's a record that'll never be broken. He's won Wimbledon twice. And last year he was a finalist in Memphis, Orlando, Queens Club, and a quarter finalist at the French. Break it down in strokes when you ask the folks about uh, Connors and his game. They will say that Connors has the best serve return in the game.
Hunters leads by four. That'll be through the tournament year of 2018. And the tournament will be played, of course, in the South Florida area, right here on Key Biscayne. 11 years remaining on the existing contract that this tournament has. Like to get in there, play the one good solid game right here. And the women's like do that, put me International in Tennis Association. Sorry to interrupt Jimmy. <laughs> commentary. By the way, that announcement made by the Lipton Company is a feather in the cap of the man who started this whole thing, Butch Buckles, tournament director here. And if ever an event had a father, Butch is a daddy. This set is going through a real change of mood here. The chair just gets very edgy, conceals it. In this stadium is full. It seats about 12,000. I would judge there about 10, 10 and a half here today. Game point, Machia. Yes. Yep. Forty-one, fifteen. I just really feel that Mechia gets just so edgy that he doesn't, he moves even less than he usually does. Read that one right. He had to try to go down the line on the second one, but he had an enormous gap there. Nerves are definitely a factor where he's concerned, mm. you know. I mean, uh, he doesn't look like he's nervous, but you know that underneath that calm exterior, well, there's boiling water. But he holds on to serve, and it's five games all now. And I want to remind you of that story that I told you about earlier, in case you just joined us. And that is that Machia, all those years ago, when he was playing against Connors, it was three or four years ago now, at the World Team Cup in Germany, actually served underhand because he got so nervous and could not physically get the ball in play when he served in the regular way. He eventually lost that match. Well, you know, the tendency, of course, when you get nervous is that you don't move as well. But when you have so little movement, you can't exactly pump yourself up. You know, if Jimmy, if somebody moves like Jimmy, who's very active, when he gets nervous, or I would say any player, they would make a concerted effort to sort of bounce around, move their feet. But when you make sheer and you make so little movement, you don't even have that to do. Legs turn to lead. He won the Lipton here last year, Machia, and then he won the WCT finals in Dallas. 
Stuttgart was indoors in Hilversum. That was uh, a clay court event. He won nine tournaments last year. And the points you made that he'd won on all four surfaces. Yeah, another line ball from Jimmy. When they hit the line, they really skid off. That one really skid. So Jimmy, who has been going to towel off between, well, not every point, but quite a few, Machia does it. First serve. For a change. Game point, Connors. This will give him 6-5. Third set. Ah. So when we come back, Mathieu will serve and he will try to get himself into the tiebreaker of the third set, one set apiece. Four games before the Division I Championship, which is on April the 1st, of course. Roger Twybell, Cheryl Miller will call the action of the Women's Basketball Regionals on Saturday at noon. Join us. Seats, please. Mathieu to serve, and remember he has been broken more times in the set than he has held serve. So. This is going to be a tough assignment for him and a rejuvenated Jimmy Connors since that extraordinary, you might say appalling display. Why, please. In Thank you. his confrontation with Rich Kaufman in the chair after Kaufman in the first set overruled a call in Machia's favor. Things have now settled down. 5-6. If you look at Level these two 15. players, it's Jimmy who's on top psychologically at this moment. Mechi is the one who is very edgy. And this, as he gets up, you can just see how much confidence he has. He doesn't hold back at all. He goes for more than he usually does on those overheads. a call Connors doesn't like it 15 all. 15 all instead of love 30 in which case he would be two points away from the set it was just wide I thought it was out I thought I thought it was out Connors has already been given a point penalty, remember, so that the next infraction, well, it will cost him a game. Right, please. That's Kaufman. I don't think there's any doubt but that Machir is affected by all of this that's going on around him. No question. I mean, he looked almost immobilized on that shot. Incredible shot. I think he's probably better when he has to run to the ball. I think if he gets caught out wide and a hard board ball I think that he actually reacts better the balls that are in the middle of the court that he just can't make himself move pure nerves Thank you. 
Couple of miss hits on that Ross rally point from Machia and Connor has finally had an easy approach shot winner and it's set point. It looked as if Machia misjudged the return of serve. He thought it was going to go out and it landed just on the back of the line. He was hoping for a call and he never was in the point again. Well, he can count his lucky stars that he came off with a relatively easy point. It was a great shot from Connors just to keep himself in that point because the approach shot from Mathieu was right on the money. It almost hit both lines, baseline and sideline. Yeah, there is so much commotion out there. Mathieu asked which cup. I think the chair is asking Kaufman to ask the crowd not to make a noise while the point is in also play. Also, as a courtesy, try not to shout out during the points. You shouldn't say try not to shout out, you should say don't shout out. Set point number two for Connors. Connors was down three games to love and that well what was more extraordinary about it was that it was two serve breaks down came back leveled it at three all finally as you saw broke Machia there at six five and now he leads two sets to one and you've got a bet on Connors at this point definitely I would think that Machia doesn't know what's hit him right now he must feel as if he is in absolutely the bottom of the biggest hole out 15 miles. Connor's first serve percentage has come down a little bit, but it still is dominating, plus, of course, his return of serve. The errors, that's where the difference is. Way more for Mechir. When you play against Jimmy Connors, it isn't just a tennis match, is it? Excellent serve. This is the first game of the fourth set, two sets to one for Connors. Forty, 
on his tailing down again like he does a couple of points each game almost and a cheer really has no alternative but to just hang around and wait. Connors has 30 seconds between points. And he uses them. Match is nearly two and a half hours old. wonderful point there just to illustrate how much Connors is having to work but he's amazing boy he has tremendous reserves of energy he'll take his time again now he'll take the full 30 seconds you can time it I bet the ball is in the air at about 26 but he needs the break because you see how much work he has to do he is hitting the ball awfully well today In the driver's seat in this first game, fourth set, he had 40-15, Connors. And Machir has worked his way back into a break point. doesn't work and Machia brings himself all the way back to break serve in the first game of the fourth set but he trails by two sets to one more after this 6-3 first set he won it then he lost the second penalty point actually closed out the set major confrontation between Connors and Rich Kaufman that now apparently is history in Jimmy Connors' mind and since the time that he Forgot about it. Ellie's played outstanding tennis and leads this match now by two sets to one. 56,250 to the winner of this match. They have already collected over 28,000, as you can see, and the winner of the tournament will make 112. That's true for both the men's and women's singles. The women's final will be played tomorrow afternoon, the men's final on Sunday. You can watch that on the ABC network. Team. The Players' Championship next live from the TPC at Sawgrass, Ponte Vedra. That's a little north of here. We're close to Miami. But first, it'll be the Players' Championship in tennis, the International Players' Championship. The golf, of course, was scheduled for to start at four o'clock, but uh, because of what's going on here, this match going longer than we anticipated. The golf will follow this match. Machia with a break, but Connors with a chance to come back in the second game of the fourth set. Connors leads two sets to one. Level 40. 
Why the longevity for Jimmy Connors? He's 35 years old. Why, what is it about his game, Virginia, do you think that has enabled him to play for so long so successfully? Well, I think it is primarily because he loves to play and he gets such a kick out of the occasion. I mean, he, he just loves being at the center of attention, as is fairly obvious today. 50, Slightly 40. doubtful call up the middle. But I, mean, I think one of the things has been that he has just always stayed up there. It's not as if he's ever had any drastically bad periods when his game has slipped off. That's the gentleman, Butch Buchholz, who sitting next to Baza Haddingham, who's chairman of Wimbledon. Oh! Buchholz is the tournament director of, or is he the chairman of the tournament here? Anyway, it's his, uh, it's his event. I also think that although Connors expends a lot of energy while, oh, I mustn't interrupt. If I playing like this and I don't get TKO'd in about the 15th round, it'll be all right. But I ain't making any promises. I'm surprised he gave us that much at the end. No, I, this is the Connors I like. I thought he'd give us a promise. I mean, I think that's nice, uh, that kind of an activity. Uh, I think that's fine. Yeah, but I think he... I think he, I think that if he said, you know, as long as the way I keep playing and continue to play that, I'm going to win. I and mean, I'm surprised he wasn't as committed as that. Maybe we can ask him the question why he thinks <laughs> he's playing so well. You know, I... He's, although I was saying he expends a lot of energy when he's playing, he doesn't do anything with his shots that distort the body. So he doesn't have anything that's going to cause him injuries. And you feel that an awful lot of the players play with such extreme styles that their bodies just can't cope with it. 30 love for Connors. It's interesting that he goes up and talks to the microphone knowing quite clearly that he's talking to you, the audience watching at home, it, and that he is together enough to where it doesn't upset his concentration. Well, that's amazing how well he concentrates. I, I frankly can't see him losing this match now. Because he is hitting everything well, his serve's good, his, all his shots are good, he's really aggressive, and I think that made Cheer's fallen apart. Nearly about, uh, let's see, 200 points played, and that's how they stand. Just over 200. Well, it's been a long time since he's served and volleyed. By the way, I agree with what you just said, Virginia. I think that uh, he is definitely in the driver's seat now. He can lose it, but I don't think Machia can win it. And the interesting thing was that we said going into this match that Machia was the one who was going to call the shots. If he played well, he could win. If he played badly, he could lose it. But I don't think he can play well enough to beat Connors now if Connors stays on top like he is. Well, he's got to erase a lot of er errors because he's still hitting too many errors. He goes for his big shots, but a lot of them aren't coming out. Oh, lucky. Deuce. You know, I think they've also been out here a long time now, and both of their concentration is getting a little bit suspect at moments. Just hard to keep up that intensity all the time. And they're the extra, well, 10. Uh, um, what percentage is that higher? It's nearly a quarter percent, a quarter more. And it makes a big difference. 
fact, I think that's the statistic that tells the story of the match. At least the tennis side of the match. There have been other considerations, as you know. At the best of times on the surface, that is a dodgy play, but for Mechir to throw that in, when he hasn't been doing that the whole match, it has very little chance of really being effective. So Mechir is still making some mental errors out here. And hardly surprising because you think that he must be somewhat mentally tired, more than physically. Game point, Connors. That will be wild, and Connors leads by two games to one and two sets to one. Directly behind the scene that you're looking at is the great city of Miami. Jimmy Connors is leading it by two sets to one. He leads go, in the fourth set, two games to one. No. Well, they're on serve, I should say, and there is that beautiful Miami skyline. It is a wonderful day out here. There's a slight breeze, but only slight. Temperature in the, I would say, mid-80s, and a lot of folks in the stands have their shirts off and are enjoying the beautiful Please. South Florida weather. Cliff Drysdale with Virginia Wade. Two hours and 40 Why minutes nice. into this match. Miloslav Machia is very much down on himself at this point. Connors has come in 39 times, a lot more than Machir, as you can see. Percentage-wise, they're about even. Machir usually comes in more in a match, but I guess when you're playing against Jimmy, Jimmy does not give you too many chances to get short balls and take them in. So that is the reason that that statistic is so low. Fifteen all. You have the feeling that Machia has got to make things happen now. If he just stays out there, Connors is not missing. His unforced errors have really been cut down considerably, and it's Machia who's making the errors. knows that Mechia is going to be the first one to make an error in a rally. If he can just keep the pressure on and not give away anything, he knows he's going to be handed it. This is a big point for Connors here in the fourth set. If he can win it, he'll have two break points. And that play has 15, worked for 40. Jimmy all afternoon. Taking the forehand cross court to Mechia's backhand and putting him under pressure to make a pass. It's that deep return of serve and from there on in, he's on the offensive all the time. I don't know, Virginia. I look at Machir and he says to me, I think I had enough of this. He's saying the same to me. I think he's gone. I just think mentally he, he just uh, has lost his application and I think it's followed that his uh, physical coordination is off a little bit. 
Yeah, he's just feeling really battered out there emotionally. And Connors leads it now by three games to one. That's a serve break, of course, in the fourth set and by two sets to one. trainer the ATP trainer check in with both players the last changeover it's hot down there and they're working hard and tired and you've been working that hard your head feels as if it's on fire Connor's intensity is amazing he has really worked hard it may not have looked like it to you but believe me Machia really moves you around the court Connor's has not stopped running at full speed ever since he got on the court and that was two hours and 45 minutes ago testimony to the kind of shape that Connors is in. <laughs> Remember that the players championship that's the golf will follow this match. This is the view from the air of the stadium. Four games to one for Connors for set. He's playing against Miloslav Machir who won the event last year against Ivan Lendl, the number one player in the world in the final. An outstanding display of tennis from Machir a year ago. He is not the same player today anyway that he was. When he won the tournament, but that's how his record stands here at the Lipton. Played it twice and has lost only Quite one please. match in two years. No commentary from Jimmy on that occasion. I thought we might get another update from him. I One think, four. I think he's concentrating too hard at this moment. Fifteen miles. You know, that kind of an action will loosen you up sometimes. Talk to somebody in the crowd, or in this case, talk to everybody that's watching on TV. And he knows that. a long time since there was an ace players championship remember immediately following this match ah. 40, 40, 50. it's a coincidence by the way that the players championship in golf and tennis are played in the same week As a matter of fact the date of this event will be just a couple of weeks later next year. One week later, in fact. Good 
40 or 30. Machia has to hold on here. This is game point. This match will be history. Deuce. Well, and it seems even if he wins this game or gets a little bit back into this match, there's no way that mentally he is up to facing up to a fifth set because he's two sets to one down. I think it'll be a relief for Machia when it's over, frankly. If he loses this point, Connors will serve for the match and he'll have a five game to one lead and two sets to one. I'd leave you no doubt as to who they support. Connors will serve for the match. It's interesting how seesaw a match can be at a certain time when Connors nearly lost it with Rich Kaufman in the chair. Well, you had the feeling that Machia was in the driver's seat, and then it all changed. Connor's got his concentration back. He was trailing at one point two surf breaks in the third set. Three games to love for Machia, and came back and won at 7-5. Connor's had actually lost six games in a row at that stage. But, you know, it's awfully difficult to sustain your own concentration when your opponent is going in and out of their concentration. And it just still baffles me why Jimmy chose to go so berserk in the middle of the match because he was really controlling it right from the first set. He had a little hiccup at the beginning, but then he really was the better player right from the start. He didn't need to throw his concentration off. 30 love, two points from the net. few balls if you have to but I think probably the most significant thing he said because it's true of course he knows that if he stays in there long enough the chair is going to make the error and not him two points from the match 30 15 5 1 Connors two sets to one for serve Thirty off. 
The winner of this match, Connors, almost certainly will play Noah or Vlander. And remember that Noah and Vlander will play tonight. And you can see that match at 12 o'clock Eastern time. That's midnight on ESPN. Chair has definitely decided that for the moment he's going to stay out here. It looks pretty dismal, the prospects for him. He's two breaks are served behind, of course, at five games to one. So if he broke here, if he wins this point, he'll have to break again. It's not over yet. Machia breaks back rather surprisingly. 5-2 for Connors in the fourth set and two sets to one. But I can't really see him having enough determination to guts it out for any length of time here. But he does have new tennis balls. Love 15. for a few shots. Players' Championship from Ponte Vedra, Florida. Well, what a great event that is. Well, it's going to follow this match immediately, due to start at four o'clock. But well, this match went a little longer than anyone expected. Two hours and 59 minutes so far. Live, and that's next. Two match points, but Connors will go to the back and he'll towel down for what I'm sure he hopes will be the final time in the final of this championship. He will play Yannick Noah or Mats Wielander. They will play tonight, and you can see that match at midnight Eastern time on ESPN. I wasn't the line stretch on that call. Connors was looking for a call, but the ball apparently was on the line. 
still match point. It looks like he might have hurt his ankle. He was down as you saw and then got back up. Watch this again. Looked like his ankle, didn't it? Well, he slipped on the front foot and then it went over on the other ankle, but a couple of times the players have slid forward. I suppose it could be a little bit of s drips of sweat on the court. Deuce. Hard and it's mature. He definitely went over on the ankle. You'll get a chance to see it here again. That foot goes down, and then watch it. See how he goes over on it right there. Doesn't look like he went over on it far enough to cause him any serious harm, fortunately. Wait, please. Game point for cheer now. Connor's lead. Oh, the polite applause for Miloslav Machia holds on to serve. He's making an effort at a comeback at least. He broke Connor's last time they served. The Players' Championship, remember, that's golf, of course, live from the Tournament Players Club at Sawgrass. That will follow immediately one of the great championships of the year in golf. But please stay tuned. Next. 5-3 now for Connors and Servan. Well, we knew it would be a great match, this, but we didn't anticipate all the drama. And if his ankle is a little sore, that immediately adds another element into it. Oh, that's an incredible shot. You think he's out of it, don't you? And then Love he just slides over there, and boy, what a shot. It's hard to believe that he can even make a cross-court backhand from this position because he's stretched so far, but that has been where he has been making that shot. Love for fun. <laughs> At 5-1, lost his serve at 5-1. The chair held on. Now you go back to that time when he said into the camera, just run down a few shots if you had to, and he was chiding himself slightly. He thought he loved when he was 5-1 up for making an error off the backhand when he really went for a pretty big shot, which was probably not necessary. to keep coming into the net 15, jimmy 30. he's got to take the initiative and stay aggressive and hope that mechu will not pass him point you're about to watch is an enormous one if mechu can win it well he'll have two break point opportunities against connors and that will put them back on serve in the fourth set connors leads it by two sets to one
another quarter of an inch would have been a clean winner. So now Connors is just two points away. He wins the next two from winning the match. The holder, Miloslav Machia, who beat Lendl in last year's final. Well, there was an awfully good serve. Miloslav did well to hit that return as well as he did, but Jimmy had hardly recovered from his serve. Sometimes when you make that return deep up the middle, it's doubly effective. This is break point. Ah! Terrific shot from Connors. He had to hit that one down the line because that was where it was open. Machia knew it, tried yes. to cover, wasn't there in time, but he had to hit it over the high part of the court net. Watch it. See, there's about six inches difference in height from the center of the net and the net pole that holds the net up. So where he hit that wall over was at least four inches anywhere higher than the middle of the court. And those inches are critical. Deuce. <laughs> now match point for Connors. This will be his third. And yeah, he served well under pressure in these last few points. wonder what's going through his mind, don't you? Get that ball. Why not go for it? This may be the last point of the match. Quiet, please. For a place in the final. For Connors. Four sets is in the final. He'll play Noah or Vlander, and we'll be back. Thanks for joining us.